Good morning, church. I am Reverend Susan Payne, minister with First Christian Church in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. We are here to worship God on this seventh Sunday in the season of Easter. It's also Memorial Day, so happy Memorial Day. Please take a moment to gather your items for worship. You may want something to eat or drink for communion. Also, maybe a candle or something to make your space special and a Bible or a Bible app to read along with the scripture. If you have a prayer concern or a joy and would like prayer, please feel free to type that in the comment line. We'll make sure that the prayer group receives those, or you may send it to me at minister at thevillefcc.org. On Wednesday, our Music with Marjorie is back, and Norma Isnard is our featured vocalist. She's going to be singing Spirit and some other Holy Spirit-inspired songs that will get us ready for Pentecost, which is next Sunday. Watch your email or this Facebook page for a link to that. And speaking of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, if you are a member of First Christian, you can expect a delivery later on in this week. We have purchased some mini loaves of bread to use for communion, and uh, we will have deliverers out to bring those to your front porch. Be assured that they will wear gloves and masks and uh, will keep their distance. And these other announcements in the life of the church, don't forget to add this to your calendar. Loretta Cheney is celebrating her 100th birthday on Saturday, June 6th. Everyone is invited to a drive-by birthday celebration at the 55 Activity Center. You'll be able to honk and wave and greet her from a distance in your car. They'll be there from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock that afternoon. Also, if you'd like to send her a note or a card, uh, you may send that directly to Loretta or send it to the church and we'll make sure that she receives it. Because of the Memorial Day holiday this week, there will be no prayer group or Bible study. We'll resume both of those the next Monday on June 1st. Now, let us enter into worship. Holy Spirit, come. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. Come as the wind and cleanse us. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the dew and refresh. Convict, convert, and consecrate many hearts and lives to our great good and your greater glory. This is our time of prayer now. As a community in Christ, we share our joys and our concerns with each other every Sunday. It's our great privilege to pray with our siblings in Christ. We help each other to carry their burdens and also to celebrate with them, to help them to give thanks to God. So after each prayer request, I will say, God in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for the family and the friends of Dorothy Elliott who passed away in Texas on May 20th. She will be laid to rest on Tuesday in Hartshorn at a family graveside service. Dorothy is going to be missed by many in Bartlesville. The family is planning a larger memorial service later in the summer. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for Barbara Lane, mother of Lee Cooper after her back surgery. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up Bart for health and healing. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up Clyde Detter for healing and health. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for comfort and peace for the family and friends of Chris Payne's uncle, Paul Roxlaw, who passed away and was laid to rest yesterday in Iowa. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Will you bow with me? Holy God, if ever we needed to see the signs of your glory, it is now. Like the disciples gathered in the upper room with an uncertain future, we need your presence and your love in our lives. God, some of us are journeying with loved ones who may soon leave this earth. Help them to feel the holiness of their walk together. Some of us are struggling with financial concerns, maybe for the first time in our lives. Help these to find the physical and the spiritual resources that they need to simply live. Lord, some of us are tired. Help all of those to see purpose and to find their spirits renewed so that they can continue on their way. 
On this Memorial Day, we remember those who gave their lives in pursuit of the ideals of freedom and justice in our world. Comfort their families and let us not forget their sacrifice, the sacrifice that they made on our behalf. Hear our prayers for all of those who need you, those that we name before you each Sunday and each day, and those who are known only to you in the depths of our hearts. And now we are so bold to pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 17. We'll be reading verses 1 through 11. John 17, 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name so that you, so that, that, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. May God add blessing to the reading of this word. When I was a little girl, the idea of a picture phone seemed pretty out there. Oh, I'd, I'd seen them on those TV shows for the House of the Future or, of course, on the Space Age cartoon shows like the Jetsons. And I'd laugh right along with everyone else when Mrs. Jetson or one of her neighbors would be caught off guard by an unexpected phone call. She'd have some kind of spa mud gunk on her face and her hair would be up in curlers. Well, folks, the future is here and it is not so funny when it's turned around on us. Skype and FaceTime and Zoom, any number of computer or phone apps can catch us when we're not at our best. And I'm not always fast enough to press ignore instead of answer. And when that happens, my messed up hair or my ratty t-shirt ensemble stares me and my collar right in the face. Here's the plain truth. My reflection is not always as picture perfect as I would like it to be. I suspect that all of our reflections could use what Jesus called a little glory from God from time to time. The Gospel of John tells us of Jesus' prayer that night before the crucifixion, and it is filled with references to glory. So he says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. And so now glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. First, in this prayer, Jesus asks God to make him a reflection of the glory that he shares with God. Jesus was asking God to show the disciples that magnificent love and majesty and awe that is God. 
and to show it to them through the familiar face of their teacher that they loved. Sometimes familiar is best, especially when we're hearing something that is life-changing. How many times have we prayed to God that someone that we know will come to believe? Maybe it's a son who's in trouble or an alcoholic friend or even a stranger on the street, and we pray that God will change their hearts with absolutely no messy involvement on our part. I wonder, though, should our prayer really be for us to find the courage to say, God, make me a reflection of your glory so that no one could possibly doubt the influence in, of you and what you're doing in my life. So that those people who need to see God can see God in a familiar face like yours or mine. When people see us, do they see God? When Someone cuts us off on the road. Do they see God? When our grandchildren or our children get the best of our patience, do they see God? If people don't see God in us as the people who profess to be Christians and the ones who are living our lives in the light of God, how much harder is it going to be for those people to come to know God? Yes, we have to acknowledge that no one can reflect the love of God and the light of God all the time. We are human after all, no matter how much we try. And God can certainly make a way into someone's life without our assistance, no doubt. But is it not our commandment and our commitment to love others just as God has loved us? Jesus prayed for the disciples that they would see God clearly through him so that the disciples might know God, and we should pray that very same prayer. And if we continue reading on, we find that Jesus' prayer didn't end with showing the disciples his glory. Jesus went on to ask two more things. First, uh, Jesus prayed that God was going to protect the disciples while he was no longer there. Jesus sounds almost like a parent sending a child out into a world that's filled with danger. Those disciples had been with Jesus and they had had only a small taste of all of the evils that they would endure in the name of Jesus and ultimately in the name of God. And Jesus says, protect them. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to protect them from all evil, from the slings and the arrows that were going to come their way. Jesus praise, protect them. Perhaps we also need to pray to God and to Jesus to protect us from all of the ugliness in the world, from the people who sneer and snipe at us for daring to believe that through God we can help to bring about change in the world. Maybe protect us from extremists in political and religious movements who believe that their way is the only way. Perhaps we should pray to God to protect us from ourselves when we become militant, thinking that our way is the only way, when truly God's way is the only way. We might ask God to protect us from our own self-assuredness that our way of worship is the only way, lest we drive others completely away from God because of our own pride and our own conceit. There is much ugliness in the world and we have to pray to God that we be protected from evil whether it comes externally or internally right here at home. And that brings us to the final prayer that night in the upper room that Jesus had. Jesus prayed that the disciples would see God's glory reflected in them so that they may be completely one. This part of Jesus' prayer for the disciples is especially meaningful today as we watch Christians fighting other Christians over who can be in and who should be able to be in the church. We read and we hear the news in the news with shocking frequency of groups that are splintering off from their group of Christianity in alarming frequency. Sometimes the point of contention is a point, is a point of doctrine, but more frequently these days, the division is a result of some social issue. 
in the Christian church, Disciples of Christ, we have chosen not to allow those issues to divide us. That is our quest. We recognize that we may never be in complete agreement about what God wants or even about what the Bible says or does not say. But disciples have committed to pray and to discuss and to study together. It is hard but faithful work to stay at the table together despite our differing understandings. And we have not always been successful at our attempts to maintain unity, at agreeing to disagree. But as siblings in Christ, we remain true to our commitment that unity is our polar star, that unity in Christ is our polar star, no matter what. That is the essential. Reflections can be tricky things. They can be distorted. They can be manipulated like funhouse mirrors. They can show sides of us as Christians that we would rather not have the rest of the world see. But true reflections of glory, pure and unspoiled, that shine through us like piercing shafts of light, those are the God moments that show others what God is really doing in our lives. Those are the God moments that show others that we are humble enough to allow God to protect us from evil, even when the source of evil happens to be ourselves. And those are the God moments that reveal us as Christians not giving up on being one in the name of Jesus, even in the hard times. God's glory has been revealed to us in Jesus. His prayer has been answered and now may we also pray that our reflections can mirror that glory more closely each and every day. Amen. When we come to the table, our task is to joyfully present ourselves first as an offering to God to say, here I am, use me in whatever way that you can. Take what I offer to you today and multiply it mightily. Church, you have been faithful. You have proven that the walls of the sanctuary do not define you and do not separate you as a, as a community of Christ. And that is an enormous shift in our thinking about why we gather and what connects us. It is our love of God and our love for each other, plain and simple. Thank you for offering this gift to each other and to God. I know it has been tremendously difficult and life-altering. The work of the church continues on. If you'd like to contribute to the work of First Christian Church, please consider sending an offering to the church. We have a secure P.O. Box 1177 in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Our zip code is 74005. These past few weeks, we have been setting the communion table ourselves. We have become the ones serving and the ones being served at the same time. It has taken on new levels of meaning for us. I have heard your stories about the significance of doing communion in this way, either by yourself, alone with God, or together with family. I ask that you bow with me now in prayer as we consider the significance of this table in our lives. Holy and everlasting God, thank you for these gifts of bread and cup that remind us of your love for us and through your son, Jesus. In these moments, focus our hearts and our minds solely on you, on your son, and on the Holy Spirit. Inspire us and renew us so that we may reflect your love and your light to our world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. On the night that Jesus gathered in the upper room with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread and giving thanks to God, he blessed it and he broke it. He shared it with his friends. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, he took a cup and he poured it. And giving thanks to God, he said, this cup is the covenant in my blood renewed. Each time that you eat of this bread, and drink of this cup. Remember me until I come again. The table is set by Jesus. Everyone is welcome here. 
please join in the celebration. Now a blessing and a call. May you go, go with God, loved and cherished and called to reflect God's holy glory in your life wherever you go this week. Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday, wonderful rest of your weekend, and come back for Music with Marjorie on Wednesday. God bless.